Hi, everyone. Um, we are here at the Q&A of um, Love DS's uh, latest film, uh, Genus Pan, uh, Lahi Hayo. So yeah, let, let's have a, have a nice uh, conversation of, about this film. Hopefully. Unfortunately, I think we don't have uh, questions from audiences coming in, right? Uh, because this is a pre-recorded thing. But anyway, um, let's just have a casual chat about it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm better that way. Better that way. Moderator, um, Yosu Hua. Um, yeah, and yes, with me is the director of the film Genius Pan, Laf Diaz. I also just watched the film um, sort of two days ago, and it it is a complex film, as actually most of your films are. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of starts off with this maybe like journey, you know, uh, through the the forest almost into um, the descent into some kind of madness in, on, on some level. And then also kind of switching over to something more, I mean, is something that we've all also seen in, in many of the other films of a certain kind of uh, heavier social critique or maybe a social realist mm -hmm. um, film. No? So structurally also quite complex. Um, I guess maybe firstly, you know, um, to ask how did you come up with this film? When did this start? Because we also mm. know that you are very prolific, you know, you've been making <laughs> films like one a year. It's sometimes hard to catch up with your films these days. But yeah, so how, how did all this come about? It started as a short film, actually. Um, I was asked by, in the year 2015, it's a long time ago, uh, I work on an omnibus uh, that, in, that, include, uh, that included uh, Kidat Tahimik and Brilliante Mendoza. We did uh, an omnibus called Journey in Malay, Filipino, it's Lakbay, Lakbayan. Uh, we did uh, an omnibus and then while shooting the film in 2016-2017 in an island, in a far flung island uh, from Manila, uh, Threads are coming out while shooting the show, so I said I'm gonna work on a bigger, uh, you know, uh, picture, a bigger, a bigger uh, film after this shoot. Uh, so after making the short, uh, after a few months, we went back to the island and yeah, I started working on the bigger, you know, version of the film, and it became that Hugao, Lahi Hayu. The title of the short film was Hugao, Filth, uh, Dirt. We were chatting uh, just before we started the recording about this, this mm -hmm. Hugao Island. And yes, I guess my, my sense of it, when it was mentioned in the film, it sounded like maybe this is a fictional island. Um, you want to talk us through what, what, what's up with this Hugao Island? Uh, it's, yeah, I work on it uh, as usual as a metaphor, metaphor or something that will conjure uh, what we are as a nation, you know. Something that, you know, quote unquote, uh, will represent what we've been through, what we've gone through, what we are now, and what's going to happen next. So yeah, it's 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 uh, it's so muddled, it's so mixed up. It's it's a very complicated culture. It's a complicated system. So the discourse is on that, the complexity of our culture, of our so-called uh, society, the, the archipelagic. Uh, structuring of this country where everything is fractured and displaced in a way and we're all struggling to find that you know synthesis where we can call ourselves at some point really a nation something like that it's a struggle it's a cultural struggle in a way yeah because i guess coming off this idea yeah that the island is maybe as you put it no it's like an island of dirt an island of filth and then yeah. We have seven, we have more than seven thousand islands. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, at some point I was wondering if this was maybe a real island, but maybe I think as the film went along, we I think we get the sense, no, that this is a very allegorical style, yes. which is yeah, you, you got a word, you got a word. It's an it's an allegory of uh, that, you know. Yeah, of, I guess we can we can we can say it right out, no, of of, of Philippines and maybe how you were feeling, you know, 
Is it, well, the, I guess... the story, the story can adjust to other cultures anyway. So we have the same, you know. Every mm -hmm. every struggle anyway is parallel to every struggle. So it's it can really adapt to Singapore, or China, mm -hmm. or the U.S. or anywhere. The idea of you know struggle amongst cultures is the same anyway. Mm -hmm. Watching this film, I really get that sense mm -hmm. that things are like in your mind quite bleak. You know? I mean. You know, right, right up to the ending, and you know, because uh, okay, I mean, there's nothing. To well, it's, it's, it's a the study ending, of you know, yeah, it's a study bleak, of you know? mm -hmm. the bleakness so, comes from you know confronting the truth. Anyway, if you confront the truth, it's always that you know, it's it's hard to face it. It's hard to mirror it. It's hard to really, really be dialectical about the truth of what you know, even with yourself, with what's happening to you. You know, to your inner self and uh, the corporeality of living, it's always bleak in a way. I'm saying it in a very, very positive and constructive way. To be able to examine something, then you have to dig, dig really deeper and it's going to be bleak. And, you know, it's hard to accept, it's hard to face it. And it has to be that way. If you want to confront the truth, then go for it, right? Go to the jugular. But can I maybe make a, a small observation of maybe even in your body of work, it actually feels like this film is maybe even darker, right? Because I, I feel like, <laughs> right? I mean, with, you know, with Women Who Laugh and even Lullaby, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's maybe a, an ounce of hope, you know? <laughs> like even if things are... Like you, you give us a little bit of... Uh, yeah, yeah. Of, of, yeah, you know? But I think this film, it's really... It's really quiet, like uh, like a dead end. No, it's like you know, even if you're telling a moral tale, yeah, it doesn't fall into the conventional trope of you know. Maybe mm -hmm. if you're, you might be rewarded with a little bit of you know um, something, you know? but instead you really are punished, um, even <laughs> on a moral level. So, I yeah, I, I, that, that I guess maybe the question is like. Is this maybe something that is that is more reflective of how you are feeling towards your politics or your country? Mm. I mean, we all mm. you, 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 your films do reflect a lot about your your, your personal stance about you know your your, your, your situation. But is this mm. maybe at a point where things for you feel really really bleak? Right, we come back to the word. Uh, there is an urgency. To say things straight now, we've come to a point where we don't have to go, you know, you know, the saying, you don't work around the bush anymore. Just say it straight because there's, there's an urgency to really face everything in a very, very confrontational and dialectical manner. Examine it, examine it now or we're going to lose it. Look at what's happening to the climate. In the next 10 years, it's going to be really bleak if we don't, we don't act. It's the same with human nature. If we don't really <laughs> examine our nature, our being, then we will always have the kinds of people that will destroy us. Trump, Putin, all these motherfuckers, mm -hmm. you know, they will be with us forever if we don't examine and, and confront it. So the, the thing with Lahi Hai of Genospan is that the vision is urgency. Yeah. No, no, I think we can definitely feel that. But yeah, talking about this human nature that you brought up, because mm -hmm. I think it directly addresses maybe yeah. with title of the film, right? Yes, yes. Um, like, you know, your, your picking of this title of the film, uh, Genus Pan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it also roughly, I guess, translates to some kind of like the species of the, of, 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 of the chimps or the apes, right? Um, yeah, that's what we are. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Which there's this very interesting scene where, you know, I guess in the radio, there was a discussion in this radio show um, about <laughs> the, the nature of, 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 of the animality of, of apes and, mm. and chimpanzees. And we still and, have it. Mm. Yeah, we still have it. And I think mm. you draw a very, I mean, the more obvious link here is this idea of like, 
like jealousy and possession and yes, yes. Right? yeah so megalomania it, you know selfishness self-absorption all those things destruction you know the the very the very fact that you can you know hurt another person that's that's being an animal you I can mean, be, you can be very simplistic about it in a way you know, look at yourself how you deal with your mama your father your relationship half of it or more than half of it is very that you know very animalistic in a way you're possessive you you get angry easily you know emotions uh, you know overwhelm you so many times not your rational so that's being an, an animal in a way I mean would you say that any of the characters in your film actually manage to transcend this this animality transcendence comes with a lot of struggle so uh, I don't know we hope that at some point in our lives we can have that kind of uh, you know you know plateau where we can really look at ourselves as real humans or human beings you know it's it's a long, long struggle to be able to achieve that you know the, the so-called uh, self-actualized human being where you can be very altruistic rational you know takes over uh, emotions you know you know so it's it's a long, long struggle to be able to achieve that the so-called transcendence of the human being to the, a real human being which you paralleled with um, like super religious figures no i mean it's almost a joke well there 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 are examples of that but it can yeah. be you know you can go to karl marx you can go to beethoven you can go to you know uh, a self actualized human being doesn't have to be very religious that's connected with you know the supra religions of the world it can be you can be an atheist but you are a very altruistic person you know you don't think of yourself think you always think of you know checking humanity trying to improve humanity trying to you know correct things so i just made examples of buddha jesus jesus christ and you know all those religious uh, persons as examples of uh, self actualized beings you know and i guess this is maybe a good place for me to ask that mm. um, there the you know this 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 idea of you know maybe this religious um, people actually in, in the film really i think the relig religiosity of of the film really really comes out in a very strong way maybe even stronger than in your other films no but just because yeah. you have this you have this i guess super pious kind of character in in, in paulo but you also see it in the rest of the film because it is this kind of like lenten period right I guess yeah. the Catholic the Catholic perspective is very Filipino anyway, so that's culture. So I I, I cannot escape, but I cannot escape that part of it because that's yeah. us, it's Filipino. Yeah, but there's also a struggle, no, in in this film because the the religiousness of this Catholicism, you know, we can't be saying it's put in either good light or a, or a, or, a, or a total right. It's it's a struggle of the character but at the same time i think i get I, when i watch the film i get a sense of 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 maybe how one wants to criticize a little bit about the way we believe in things right mm -hmm. um whether is it in the superstitions of the hugao island right mm -hmm. or like our more extreme beliefs about the salvation of religion you know? yeah the, the, the elements in the film come up quite strong um, yes yes watching it um would yes i mean there there are there are points i would even say that maybe the superstition um sort of continues to entrap the people mm. right um mm. who continue to believe in them but is that maybe a, a certain kind of naivety that you are trying to explore in the film? Well, it's it's a moral discourse. The film is a moral discourse, a, a discourse on morality. How man's perspective on the issue of good and evil, on the issue of good and bad, 
is always shaped by, you know, the environment, you know, in the case of the Filipino, the, the Catholic perspective, the 400 year struggle of uh, colonizations under Spain and then America. So it's, when you talk about moral reckonings, you know, let's be specific on individuals, they're shaped by those things. You know, colonization for poor people is uh, something very alien to them. They don't, they couldn't, they couldn't discourse about it. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't uh, articulate on why they are so fractured in a way as individuals and as a society. They couldn't dissect what, you know, why. The, the questions always is how and what. They don't go to the why, which is very dialectical. How and what is just the exigency of uh, the daily things, food, you know, the heat, you know, uh, what they see as very, very naive in a way. So that's a big part of the discourse of the film, how uh, these things shape, you know, the issue of uh, morality, how individuals discourse on those very, very fundamental things in life, the issue of good and evil the issue of, you know, even death and rebirth, they don't, you know, it's, it's always shaped by the environment, culture is that way, yeah. So in the case of Andres, he questions things, but then he is not yet dialectical. He couldn't articulate well why, but he's going there. He needs to be educated to understand why. And, and in the case of uh, of uh, the religious guy Paolo, it's yeah, it's very it's it's very fundamental for him. The issue of morality is based on, you know, God, the teachings of Jesus Christ of Catholicism. And the other guy is very, very cynical about the world, but he is still shaped at least by myths, uh, the myths of you know, their existence in the island. So the, the discourse is always that, you know, it, yeah, with these I individuals, guess, yeah. I guess from how I see it, maybe to bring back with this idea of, of the title itself, right? That mm. the, how, the how and why question is always maybe exists on the, the level of the animality, right? Of, of like the, yes. how, how, how do we, how do we find the next meal? How do we, mm. like, the exigencies yeah. of daily life, yeah. But I, but I'm also wondering, you know, like um, I think oftentimes we are looking at maybe even the spiritual and the religious to mm. answer the question of why, you know, to even try to use that. Maybe yeah. there, there, guess, there goes there goes faith. There goes faith. Yeah. Faith faith for them will answer everything, and that's why they couldn't, you know, create a constructive or progressive way of thinking. Mm. It's always uh, blurred by the issue of faith, you know. In the case of the Filipino, Catholicism, Islam, and other, you know, myths that surrounds their being, that overwhelms them. So it's always important to really educate people on a very, very, you know, dialectical manner, to, to be very critical of everything, not to, you know, fall on the shortfalls of having beliefs like, you know, that the one that's offered by religion, which is an easy fix for problems, for you know things like that, you know, oh, uh, religion always gives that, you know, oh, just have faith in God, and you're safe, you know. There's always that thread of you know emancipation, and it's always answered by myths like religion, or myths that were created by the smugglers too. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The, the, the myths, the, the myths. Right? The mix yeah. of the culture. It's a mix of that, you know. Mm. A mix of those things always. That's why it's, it's very hard to really push society, society to move forward if uh, the things that always overwhelms perspectives and beliefs is always based on, you know, religion, myths, and not on uh, truths, you know, of, uh, you know, it, it, it's, and again, truth, the issue of truth is always very broad and relative, so 
it's as hard hard discourse always how do you how do you create discourse with people that will push him towards that to be constructive and progressive i think that's the bigger struggle to be able to you know get us out from the rot of being animals of being still in that you know, species you know the genus pond thank you for for your insights on this but oh yeah anytime people, man <laughs> <laughs> for for the for for the viewers who also follow maybe the 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 rest of your body of work maybe mm. i i think it would be interesting for us to know um you know with, with maybe with genus pan how have you have you found also you know new new ways to approach your cinema right i i think when we talk about love the mm. cinema i think many times you know scholars or critics uh, you know or, mm. already have come up with some ideas of what your your cinema is but then but the black and white the slow <laughs> yeah but i'm going to say that it's actually constantly also growing right because yeah i keep you, i keep searching for new ways to say things always you know the, the always, use, it's always that you know yeah i mean with genus pan and maybe with your next project i'm sure you have quite a few already lined up but yeah but we're we're shooting next week actually finishing a new film yeah, I, I, are you are you seeing like a, maybe a, you know a different approach you know to 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 how you are going to take your cinema? It's it's not a different approach, but for me it's always growing. You know, uh, I adjust things on issues of uh, the demands of the work always, or even the dem the demand of the nitty gritty, the little things. I don't really impose any kind of a, an, an idealized kind of a structuring or form with my works. It's always growing. I'm always open to threads or how to go about things. There's no real structure in a way. All right. Mm. <laughs> mm. No, no, again, thank you for yeah, your yeah, sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>